Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to paint my puppy, so stick around. I recently did a video on my super granulating watercolor palette that I put together and I have it right here. I'm going to use it in this video. I did add to it and I'm going to explain that midway through the video. I'll walk you through the new colors that I added from my existing stash of watercolor tubes. But in the meantime, this picture right here on the top left is my puppy Tuffy and I want you to feel free to use this reference picture along with me. Grab your sketchbook and let's sketch him and paint him together. I'm using kind of different colors. You'll see very different from his real look. <laughs> He's a black and white dog. And I just wanted to use my beautiful colors. So here's some puppy inspiration for you so that you're ready to get down to business. This is what he's like when he's visiting his grandmother. He runs down the hallway to her. He loves her so much. <laughs> so I used two different fountain pens to do this sketch. I used a Sailor LeCool, which is a more affordable entry level Sailor. It's still quite costly compared to a throwaway pen. But for fountain pens, you are reusing them. And I fill them with indelible black ink for my sketching. And so I really love that pen. But for a truly crazy affordable option is the other Sailor pen. I don't even know what it's called, but it's the green and black one. I'll go ahead and link both of them below for you. But that is the one that got me these really thick lines here because that is a bent nib fountain pen. So you can get really cool varied lines with that bent nib and I really love sketching with it. And that's an example right here. So I really want you to feel free to get into whatever is your most favoritist, wonderfulest, most glorious art supply that you're into right now and pull it out. Right now for me, that is my super granulating watercolor palette. I'm still completely over the moon for it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it and I'm using all different colors in the background here and just a lot of water to let those colors move around and groove around. And then I decided to carry some of the turquoise and blues into the puppy's face as sort of the highlight color. And then the purples that I added, I just thought would be so beautiful with this color scheme of purple and turquoise for his shadows. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what I did to this palette, and then we'll get back to the painting. Here we go. In my last video, I filled this special Meaden palette, which is just a really pretty pattern. And I had nine, I think seven or nine slots left at the end of that video. And what I did is as I finished that video, I wanted to uh, go through my existing stash and actually hold on of watercolor and see what I had that might, you know, help me out with filling the rest of the pans with some more granulating colors that I might already have and then limit how many other paints that I might buy new because, <laughs> you know, I buy a lot of paints. So that was on my mind. So as I was going through those tubes, I realized that some of those tubes were getting a little bit old, and if I didn't empty them out, they could go bad. So what I ended up doing was filling a lot of these half pans, not with necessarily granulating colors, but certainly with color shifting colors, or colors that had some kind of an interesting element to me, or that I thought would just fill an important slot. Like Naples yellow is definitely my favorite yellow. It's this beautiful buttery yellow but it's not granulating by any stretch of the imagination. And I didn't actually know there was a granulating yellow until I put out that video and you guys were commenting that there's this new awesome volcano set of the super granulating colors from Schmincke. So I'm definitely gonna be looking into the red and the yellow from that. And there were a couple of other lunar colors and other, other colors that you guys were suggesting that could have fit those roles. And when I use up these pans, like when that's used up, I'll replace that with that. And so what I'll do is just try to use up what I have so it doesn't go bad. <laughs> and then I will be refilling with new super granulating colors as those tubes and these pans are used up because I don't want the paint that I have to go bad. So the ones that I added, Cascade Green is one of my absolute favorite colors anyway. Here, let me show you a close up. Ow, I rolled the chair over my foot, that really hurt. There's Cascade Green. Look how, <laughs> look how gorgeous that is. I mean, come on. And while it's not granulating, it is color shifting. And that counts for me for what makes, like, look at that forest gray. I wonder if that's going to come across, how beautiful and color shifting and granulating that is. I added the ultramarine turquoise, just like French ultramarine, 
ultramarine turquoise granulates because it has ultramarine in it. It's just not as obvious as, you know, regular ultramarine. And the rose of ultramarine, the same thing. It granulates because it has ultramarine in it. So the turquoise ultramarine is the same thing. So I added that. Added, yeah, the Naples yellow. And then the cobalt cerulean was the other one that was just going bad. And it does seem to granulate. I mean, am I crazy? I think because it's cobalt, that looks granulating to me. But maybe you'll tell me that I'm crazy. This is the other swatch. How did I forget perylene green? Because I didn't do a really good swatch there. This is a much better swatch. Perylene green, also not granulating. But I had a huge tube of it. And I just wanted... I just love it, guys. <laughs> I just love it and I wanted it. This is in my like, I love you so palette. And I was like, you know what? I have a tube of this perylene green from when I made my normal Schmincke palette. My, and I just wanted to use it and it's my palette. I'll do what I want to. So it's not all granulating anymore. I love it. I don't care. Whatever it does, that's what I want my paint to do. <laughs> so pretty. So one, two, three, four, five. Titanium gray I also added. That is a very granulating color, gray titanium from Daniel Smith. But it's very opaque, much like the Naples yellow is opaque. And again, I have a huge tube of that and I just need to be using it up before it goes bad in the tube. So I added that as well. And then there was nothing else that really fit that exact color profile. Burnt Umber from Schmincke, which is a very smooth, not really a granulating color, but it's just such a pretty color. And it's a very standard color for me that I didn't feel... I had with the Mars Brown. So I added that. Again, I have a tube of it. I don't want it to go bad. And Naples Yellow, which let me finish off that tube. So those are the ones that I added from Cascade Green to Naples Yellow were the ones that I added. And I will replace them with favorite, beautiful, insane, ultra granulating colors as I use them up. I just want to use the colors that I have and use the tubes that I have before they go bad. So with that... Let's get you back to your regularly scheduled program. So <laughs> this is hilarious because we're talking about my painting of my doggy and that was him like snorting and exhaling audibly in the background, <laughs> just complaining that I'm interrupting his nap. Basically, he's in the sunspot in the <laughs> studio, just really enjoying his time. So very appropriate. But anyways, I wanted to do a bunch of different turquoise blues and grays and greens in the background because those were the colors that were just calling me the most on my color chart. Shock. I love green, <laughs> including turquoise green. Enjoy the satisfying tape peel. Obviously, I'm not done with the baby. His whole body isn't painted yet, but the background was painted and I just wanted the tape off so I could see it a little bit more easily. So I decided the colors that I just was the most dying to use were all those turquoise greens and blues and then the purple. And so I used the turquoise, even carried it onto the little pup for his sort of highlight color. And I use the purples, especially that cobalt blue violet that I'm completely obsessed with for his shadows. And I really love how it came out. I think that this idea of just picking whatever color you want and whatever's calling to you, it doesn't have to be realistic, guys. Like, who cares? It's your color palette. You're inventing it. As long as the colors that you're choosing to use look good together, it doesn't have to have anything to do with whatever the color of the subject was originally. In fact, I didn't even do Tuffy's face. That's his little name. Tuffy's face completely turned as much as it was in the reference picture that you'll see. Because a reference picture is literally, it's in the name, right? It's for reference. You just refer to it. It gives you inspiration. For me, it gives me some basic proportions. And then I riff. I go off on my own. So I was really just referring to this picture when I was first doing my sketch in pencil. Again, when I was laying down the ink sketch with my sailor pens, and then when I was deciding where to put the heaviest shadows and if I needed to lay down more contrast, more shadows, or if I needed to put some more a turquoise for indicating highlights in different places. And that's really all I used the picture for. I barely looked at it once I started painting. I only looked at it for, hey, I feel like this doesn't have enough contrast. I feel like my shadows and lights and my values basically are not on point. Let me refer back to my reference picture and come right on back to the painting. So I stinking loved making this painting. I cannot even tell you. I loved the process of making it. I loved every moment it was coming together. I was doing so many dances and songs and you know how I am. I totally let loose in my studio and I really enjoy 
painting and I really loved painting this and I really can't wait to paint again with this palette it is so much fun but I really I used to be so afraid to paint my own dog I love him so much that it really gets in the way of my objectivity for being able to come up with a good painting when you love your subject so much so the hardest subjects for me to paint are my dog and my husband because <laughs> I love them too much but just with practice and practice and practice it would just be such a dream if I could get more comfortable painting especially my dog because to me he's the epitome of cute the height of cuteness nothing ever gets cuter to me than my dog I love him so much I've had him since he was a puppy he's a little rescue pup and I drove all the way to Nebraska to get him because he was, I didn't even think he was real in the picture. You know what? I'm dropping a picture here that they put on the rescue site. Take a look at these pictures. Would you think this dog was real? I thought he was fake. So <laughs> we went and got him immediately. He and his sister were there because they were both born a little bit sick. And so they were probably the result of a backyard breeder that wasn't going to get any money for them and just dumped them, you know, at the local shelter. So I got the benefit of that. <laughs> Got to adopt him right from birth. And I love him so much. And I just think he's endless inspiration to me. So being able to just practice and practice and practice, being able to paint him and pretend he's not my dog and pretend he's someone else's dog so that I can kind of get the effect I'm going for and what I would be able to do if I was painting anyone else's dog is just such a dream. So this was really the first time I felt like I was able to do that. I've painted him and drawn him so many times and I definitely got better and better and I've definitely been happy with things before, but never like this, never to this extent. So I just loved this painting process. I wanted to share it with you. Feel free to paint or draw any of the pictures I've put in here for you for reference and use different colors and tag me on Instagram. I wanna see what you guys are making. I am creating cute art on Instagram. If you're not subscribed here, I really would love it and appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you know anyone who might enjoy my channel, please spread the word about it. I would love to just grow and grow because I love your comments. I love this community and I'll look forward to reading what you have to say about this painting below. Until next time, remember, create something cute.